So what is the key to long-term investment? Obviously, there are recessions once every 8, 9, 10 years on average. But if you're looking to invest over a 20, 30 year time horizon, what can you look at to make sure that your investment will succeed over a longer period of time? Here in this video, I'm going to tell you. Hi, I'm Reed Kirkenbauer with InvestAsian.com, sitting in for Andrew today at Nomad Capitalist. Today, we're going to be talking about demographics, which are key to any nation's long-term growth prospects. See, when a country has strong demographic trends, they're not reliant on the whims of the global financial system or whether, whether a recession happens once every X amount of years. They don't need to uh, necessarily rely on foreign investment to keep flowing in in order for a country to keep growing. And a country with good, solid, strong, long-term demographic trends is more reliant on internal growth factors than the whims of the global financial system. Here, let's take this example. Of course, our world is global and interconnected, and Starbucks and McDonald's exists everywhere from Brazil to South Africa to Australia and practically everywhere else in the world. But the exception are frontier market countries, emerging and frontier markets which are just starting to industrialize industrialize places like Cambodia and Vietnam, Myanmar and Bangladesh. Here, uh, let's take this example. Uh, of course, our world being interconnected, let's say a global financial crash happens and uh, all the major multinational firms stop investing abroad. They stop investing at home, which, you know, if they're not investing at home, they're almost certainly not investing abroad either. So in this case, you know, let's say uh, a crash happens in the U.S. and McDonald's stops investing abroad. Well, that means that everywhere from all the countries I mentioned before, Australia, South Africa, Africa, Brazil, etc., aren't seeing any investment from McDonald's or similar multinational firms, Nike, you know, all the con uh, large companies which help feed foreign investment into emerging markets and help sustain their growth. Well, Let's look at frontier markets instead of emerging markets, which might not have McDonald's. You know, there isn't any McDonald's in Cambodia. There's barely any McDonald's in Vietnam. So what happens when McDonald's stops expanding abroad? Well, Cambodia and Vietnam aren't affected because they don't have McDonald's in the first, first place. They're more reliant on demographics and internal growth factors, and thus are less uh, or more resilient to any global financial crash in such a situation. So what types of demographic trends in particular should you be looking at when investing internationally? Well, today we're going to be going over three in particular. The first is urbanization rate, which is the percent of people who live in urban areas. Well, why is this important? Well, when countries first start out, you know, when they're frontier markets trying to develop into emerging markets and then into developed economies, uh, of course, frontier markets and countries which are newly industrialized or perhaps not even yet industrialized uh, are very agrarian focused. Their, uh, you know, their economy depends heavily on exporting rice and uh, mining and raw materials and perhaps oil if they're lucky. Um, a country's goal at this point, when their economy is agrarian based, is to industrialize and start setting up factories. Um, you know, of course. Uh, uh, manufacturing computer parts and pharmaceuticals, and those are all higher value products than uh, agriculture, uh, agricultural goods. So uh, once a country is already, already industrialized, the goal from then on is for more people to move into the city and, you know, work in offices and start setting up uh, shops and become becoming entrepreneurs. And that's really when labor is of its highest value, when people are living in the cities and uh, are able to contribute to a global economy because, of course, cities feed into the global economy. So a country's urbanization rate shows how much progress they've made towards this front. Um, a country with a high urbanization rate in the you know, 70, 80 percent plus range maybe doesn't have that much room to grow. They're already industrialized and don't have to worry about, you know, uh, moving from an agrarian-based society towards people working in offices. So there might not be as much growth potential in these 
countries. On the other hand, a country with a low urbanization rate, 20, 30, 40 percent or so, um, but one that's growing quickly, has strong growth potential and is ideal for long-term investment. So the second type of demographic trend that's important to look at when investing abroad is population growth, population growth rate in particular. Now, having a bunch of people in one space isn't necessarily a good thing, especially when a country has limited resources or a small amount of land size. A place like, I don't know, Bangladesh, where there's 150 million people or so living in a small area that's prone to flooding, that might not be a good idea. But population growth in general uh, is conducive towards a country's long-term growth prospects. Uh, for starters, having a dense, uh, for the same reason urbanization rate is important, having a lot of people in one area is conducive to economic activity. There's more people together, it's easier to uh, for commerce to flow, and uh, perhaps more importantly, multinational firms are more interested in expanding in countries with a large population. Um, you know, as I was talking about McDonald's, Nike, all of the companies which help feed capital into emerging and frontier markets. Um, you know, they're more interested in investing in countries with a population of 90, 100 million uh, people like, uh, you know, the Philippines and Vietnam, which each have populations around that size, or Indonesia, which has 240 million people. Why would they go to Costa Rica with, you know, six uh, or about six million people when they can, you know, sell to 100 million people in Vietnam? So population growth in countries with an expanding pool of consumers, who are able to buy products and create companies is generally a good thing for economic growth over a longer period of time. The third factor worth looking at is whether a country has a low average age. Um, of course, we've all heard about Japan and their economic issues. Uh, you know, they're going through population decline. Uh, they have a high average age. The average Japanese person is aged 42 years old, I think. So they have the second highest average age in the world next to, I believe, Monaco, which is first. Um, not ideal uh, for a nation's long-term prospects. On the other hand, when a country has a low average age, I'm talking about you know countries in Africa, Southeast Asia, Philippines, and Cambodia, the average age is 25. Uh, so that's a very low average age. It means that first off, a labor force is more productive when people are younger. Uh, secondly, uh, a country needs to spend uh, you know less money on social services and pensions and uh, you know health care when they have a young population. Uh, so having a low average age is conducive to birth rates and all sorts of positive economic contributors. So what do all of those things mean when they combine with each other? Let's say you're looking to invest in a country which has all three of those demographic trends in its favor. It has a, a rising, growing population with a young average age and with a, an urbanization rate which is maybe on the lower or middle end of uh, percentage-wise, but is improving. Well, what would a country with that profile look like? You can expect for real estate prices to keep growing because more people are moving into the city, people who are young and having children with higher paying jobs. So that's obviously beneficial for a country's real estate market, but also its stock market and business prospects and uh, all sorts of different factors. Demographics really help uh, a nation's long-term growth prospects. So yes, you should definitely Definitely watch for demographic trends when choosing to invest abroad. Don't stop now. We've got well over a thousand more videos here on YouTube for you to watch and learn how to go where you're treated best. And if you want to work with Nomad Capitalist personally, go to nomadcapitalist.com apply, learn about our unique tried and true process, garnered over years of experience, and learn how you can become our client.